Yay! <laughs> If you move that yeah. and duck, we could probably, if you move, just move that, John. John. You want to move that? Just move the thing. I keep popping out of That's here. That's not empty, Rich. Okay, you know what, Chad? Oh, I want to put this down. Keep it coming. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. yeah. woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, oh, he's on, he's on two wheels. I know, we can go. Ah! Right now, we just decided to pull the Argo Max into the shop. Chad's working on what he knows how to do best, carburetor tings. Mm -hmm. John is doing what he does best. Nothing. Joey's doing... <laughs> Joey's working on the Mini Cooper. John's putting some air in the tires to see uh, if they hold air. With all that torque, I think Ali was riding it and snapped one of the chains. One of the chains is missing, but this works exactly how the Sherp does. As a matter of fact, it's actually owned by the same company now. So we need to get a replacement chain like that one on this side. This thing pulled pretty hard for only having like what, five wheel drive? Yeah. Not So are any of these wheels idlers or no? Are they all no, driven they're all, wheels? They're all driven. They're all driven wheels, man. This is wild. That was a wild time. What an idea. <laughs> Look how clean that is now. After all that vacuum and spraying. You know what? Can we, can we adjust the tension on these chains, Chad? Or is, um, it, is it adjusted by it's this? It's adjusted by that. Okay. But I mean, there's a lot of slop in some of these chains. Like there's they're a stretched. Lot. Actually, no, look at the bottom of this. Look at this one. Yeah. They're stretched pretty hard. Talk about, look at this bonding. Yeah, yeah. John, hold on, dude, seriously. I'm holding. Well, 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 what do we have here? Right now we have a stripped down Argo. Uh, this is the bottom half and the top half with the fuel tank is on the other side next to the bike. And this is actually very reminiscent of the Sherp, all chain drive here. That's the, uh, the transfer case, transmission, whatever you want to call it. And over here on this side is a 14 horsepower B-Twin Vanguard. At this point, what I want to do is something similar to what I did with the Harley. I want to take off this sprocket, uh, the drive belt shaft, take that off and to put that on the electric motor so it could connect to this portion of the drivetrain. Before, I had this in neutral like an idiot and I was spinning this over and over again, wondering, my hands are very ashy, wondering why this wouldn't spin. There you go. Boom, you go it forward and reverse and now it's, uh, it drives the actual chains. Over on this side, we have to get a new chain. Over on this side, the, a couple teeth are missing from that as well. So we have to run a new chain from here. Uh, so this, so the sixth wheel is actually still driven because without that wheel, it's a dead wheel. And when you try to turn, it doesn't work. So what I want to do now is attempt to get this uh, belt sprocket off to mount it to the electric motor and also connect to here. Goes the here she goes. There you go. Yep, you're good. Just let, just let it happen. So right now we're just uh, dumping all the water out of the city EL. Now you might remember a couple years ago we did the uh, electric conversion on this, or rather we upgraded 
the existing electrical conversion on this uh, to run on several drill batteries. Uh, unfortunately, this city E admit its demise. Uh, it was rolled over, so uh, we removed the top glass. Uh, and right now we're just kind of harvesting the remainder of the components in here to do the Argo. It's almost impossible to find parts for these. All the parts are from people overseas that don't necessarily speak English. And uh, the import fees for a lot of these things like the body, uh, the fiberglass body is uh, super out of control. So what we need to do is uh, we actually made this faceplate already to fit on the motor we're gonna use. So we're gonna attempt to remove this faceplate to use on the Argo. Uh, we're gonna remove uh, the remainder of the drill connections. Maybe we'll make this one drill powered too. Maybe, probably not honestly. But unfortunately, once we remove this, this will render the city EL useless because the, the axle shaft goes through this. So uh, it's gonna be a tough and sad time, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Joey, Joey, just gonna work out. Oh, no. Uh, what do you think, what's going on? Oh, uh, here it comes. <laughs> hey. Freaking, you do that every time. Linda, Linda, Linda. Why don't you ever give me the, the code or a key? I'm not going to give you the code to this place. Linda, how are you doing? Well, fine, but I feel offended. Linda, how are I, you? I'm, uh, I was doing better earlier. What? Anyways, yeah, so we're here. What, what brings you to the area this time? You wanted me to come in today. You're looking for, I, I definitely didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, you like, I hate <laughs> no, when you lie. No, I, 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 never, I never would say something like that. Why is ATV back? We already, I already did a video on this. You did. Yeah, when we did it on the, um, when we were on the water and you almost drowned that time. Um, that yes, that was, cool. that was, that was plastic. <laughs> we actually found the culprit. Come here, I'll show you. Ready? Wait, no. That was it, that was it right there. See that massive Are hole? you kidding me? There was supposed to be a plug there. That's what sank you the first time. I almost lost my life over a freaking hole. Over a hole. tiny little hole, yeah. Yeah. Hole? yeah, no, that was, yeah, we went out pretty far. That was pretty amazing. And by we, I mean you. I watched you kind of go out little, there. I had my life jacket on, so I was okay. I was, I was very proud of you. But yeah, no, this, remember that old engine that was in there that was hard to start before? Yes. So this giant behemoth is out and we're gonna replace it with that electric motor that was originally in the city EL. Hi, John. Hi. John's behind you, by the way. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't know where John came from. <laughs> I don't know where John came from. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was actually kind of funny. <laughs> so I just came. Was he here? The, he was there the whole time. Yes, I was there the whole time. John was there the whole time. Yeah, so. Wait. Yeah. You always do this. So we're going to try to make wool. <laughs> you my assist, mm -hmm. making this electric. Yeah, so we took that engine out and we're gonna make some custom brackets to fit this electric motor in here. The problem with this electric motor is that usually there's like a base that it kind of goes on. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with this motor, it's like a face mount. So it's like a side profile mount, so it's a little bit more tricky to do. Not only that, but this bracket is aluminum and this is not aluminum and you can't weld the two. So we gotta get we gotta get drill happy, drill nuts bolts, which is good because I mean, if we actually uh, cut, you don't really care about any of this. But anyways, no, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, why am I even going on? Is this even on? Oh, I don't think I can get inside this. I just want to make this like a pool because it's about to get hot. Yeah. Okay, we can do that. I mean, it's that. super rusty, so like I'll clean it. Yeah. Can you take all this stuff out and I'll just clean it and then we could turn it into a pool? Yeah, yeah. What I could do is I could take out everything that makes this an ATV and I could turn it into a bathtub. I could do that for you. I want a pool. Ooh, John just said hot tub. Hot tub. Where is he? He just kind of, he's going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Rusty. the bearings. <laughs> oh, the bearings? Yeah, it shot me in the chest. Well, guess what? But Joey has his safety glasses on, so it's fine. Oh. That's why we wear safety <laughs> goggles. Did hey, Barry hit you in the chest? It's like a BB gun. Right. Jesus, John. Can't bring me anywhere. John is a great asset to us at the Richview Builds channel at the shop. He does so much for us, we're gonna give back to him by giving him a free haircut with our Manscaped trimmer. Let's go do it now. Fully adjustable. Look at that there. You can even remove the top of it for a closer shave. 
What the? Now you're familiar with Manscaped for trimming the nether regions, right? Well, guess what? The Beard Hedger trimmer has a powerful 7200 RPM motor and a titanium coated T-blade that can cut through the thickest of hair in a single stroke. That was one swipe, one swipe. Whether you prefer a five o'clock shadow or a flowy lion's mane, you can choose from 20 different hair cutting lengths with the zoom wheel that only uses one guard. This beard trimmer is waterproof, cordless, and rechargeable, so you can trim in the shower to save time and create less mess. You don't need to use the same trimmer anymore for your private as you do your face, and no one really wants to do that ever. There is even a dermatologist-tested beard care products to help you grow and nourish a magnificent beard or a patchy one that still looks and smells better than before. Manscaped beard oil is infused with sweet almond, sunflower seed, and jojoba seed oil, whatever that is. Jojoba, jojoba, who knows? So get a beard hedger kit. It comes with all these goodies like shampoo, conditioner, oil, balm, travel case, and a gift to help you get more Olive Garden dates. Simply go to manscaped.com today and get a 20% off plus free shipping when you use promo code Rich R at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code Rich R at manscaped.com. So I'm looking at the old footage of the Argo and I realized something. Why am I wasting so much time trying to make it belt drive and keeping this stuff when there's literally already a sprocket shaft on the transmission? And I'm sure it's a common size, so I took the belt sprocket combination off and I measured it with the digital caliper and sure enough, it is a common size. 22.6 millimeters is the shaft size. So if I go on the industrial supply store, it's local to me's website and go to sprockets. Let's see, I want a fixed bore. I want a, a 50 series chain. If I do the math, 22.6 millimeters to inches is about 0.889. And if you paid attention in math class, that mostly closely corresponds to seven eighths. Ideally, I like to have a larger sprocket, but those weren't available for pickup and it would take a week to ship. So let's get a more common size tooth, okay? Got this one, ordered the socket. It should be ready in an hour. Let's take the Hellcat. I just wanna talk about how awesome this car is. I don't talk enough about the Hellcat but the sounds that this thing makes are just amazing. Listen to this. It's funny because when people are in front of you, they hear the supercharger whine, they always look in their rear view mirror, and a lot of the times they actually pull over at the side of the road because they don't know what's behind them. Again, what an awesome piece of machinery this is. I can't get enough of this. Okay, I got the chain. Let's see if my measurements are correct. Like a glove. These are out from the bottom of the motor and these are gonna support the uh, brackets for the new electric drivetrain. So these are actually pretty important. We go over here. So right here, it's interesting. I didn't think they would have rubber isolated mounts, but that's a really smart idea because that thing vibrates like crazy, I'm sure. But there's nice rubber isolated mounts so it doesn't transfer the rest of the body. We have these, so hold it straight up. Can I get in your way again? Yes, please. Okay. Yay. The big question is now, where do you mount the batteries? So I was thinking, the answer is obvious, right? You mount them to the side, but thinking about it, do we want the batteries that low? Cause we have to test this thing in water. John, you're looking good. Yeah, it's looks nice, man. Thank you. I wanna open this up, uh, separate the plastic from the heat sink, just to make sure that no water got in the inside of this. Cause if water gets in the inside of this then it's not gonna work. There doesn't seem to be much corrosion around these terminals. That's slightly concerning. But either way, I want to get inside to make sure that we're not going to run any problems later. Oh, this is clean. It was clean, baby. And it's clean. 
Yeah, that nice. was just that was just external surface rust. Oh, that's got a nice seal to it, dude. Look at that. This is a really nice seal. In case you want to see the inside of this, that's a really nice rubber seal. So this looks really good. I'm going to put the top back on, seal it back up, and then send it up. All right, get your gloves on. We got to work. What is that? My shoulder bag. Isn't it cute? This is a fanny pack. No, it's a shoulder bag. Stop Lena, it. What's in here? My it, lotion. I don't care what's in there. <laughs> Lena, Lena, there's a strict rule now. There's a new rule since you've been gone. Hey, Ray. No fanny packs or shoulder bags. I'm sorry, Linda. I'm sorry. It's got to go. I'm don't sorry. Touch my I'm sorry. Ray, That's trash. <laughs> it is trash. Really? Sorry, kiddo. No, it's, it's time. So, here. pretty close that's pretty close usually we'd use our laser level for this but we don't know where that is this is pretty much good to go my only concern i was kind of hemming and hawing about this not being a large enough sprocket but i think the the power of the motor and the rpm that it can achieve will definitely you know make up for that so we'll do that i'm gonna get another sprocket here just in case just so we're not wasting time kind of fudging back and forth but uh, i also have to go into the controller settings and set this to go to max RPM, which is about 6,000, which it actually might already be there from the CDEL. So I think we're kind of in pretty good shape. Also, the orientation of this is already spinning forward, so I don't have to go into any of the uh, reverse and forward settings on this. So I think we're, we're doing pretty good so far. Pretty good, not bad for a budget. Lena, let's get some tools ready to... Linda, I gotta get the, uh... I get some gloves, Linda. 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 Is it an on button for you somewhere? Oh. Hi. Hey, Linda. <laughs> hey. Well, you need the. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're clearing some space out in the shop. Uh, right now, the hovercraft is getting loaded up to head to mat, and I have to take care of the city el. I probably have to cut that up in pieces. And uh, here's the hovercraft right here, getting taken away. Oh, do you ever do you ever smack us and say that's not going anywhere? That's that's not going anywhere. That's Always. not this that's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> you awesome. smack it. <laughs> yeah, smack it, man. That's awesome. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, that's how you know the load's secure. Right. Even DOT is gonna ask you, hey, did you flick it and say it's not going anywhere? Right. If you say no, they'll find you. Yep. That's, dude, that's that's nicer than my house. <laughs> and I actually, mean, I'm I'm not super tall, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buzz tall as you. Yeah, yeah. You lay right across there. Oh, feet, that's feet awesome, man. Here. Feet right here. Head. Oh, in, in insulation for stuff. No one could see you. It's Private. Privacy, yeah. That's cool. Anyone ever harass you? <clears throat> uh, no. No, I've never had an issue. So here comes the really hard part about troubleshooting things like this. Now, because this is mostly electronic, it makes it slightly easier to troubleshoot. You get warning lights on the controller that corresponds to certain codes that you can get. 
to diagnose what's going on with the controller. Unfortunately, this controller that I use in the City EL isn't giving me any signs of life. There's no flashing error lights, there's really nothing when I hook it up directly to the battery. Usually what happens when it gets 72 or 96 volts, you'll get the display light and it'll tell you, hey, the wiring harness is not connected. It'll give you some life. Unfortunately, I'm not getting anything out of this one. What we're gonna do next is I'm gonna swap in a different control that I happen to have, hook up the battery to that, to see whether or not I can get life out of that controller. Okay, well this was fun. Unfortunately, I've determined that this motor is in fact bad. This will not freely spin anymore unless I give it a, a death gorilla grip and even then it barely turns as it is. At first I thought it was the spacing of the motor from the back plate uh, so I loosened all the bolts just to make sure it wasn't pressing um, against the sprocket but it is not in fact doing that. This controller works fine. For some reason the other controller did not work. I feel like everything from this the City EL unfortunately did not work. And these are the games we play, you know, these are the things that, that you run into when you're trying to build something. And uh, unfortunately, most of this equipment did not work. Uh, this did work, this larger controller, the smaller controller did not work. That motor does not work. So unfortunately, it seems like we have to upgrade to a larger motor to make this thing actually work. Either that or I could reach out to the company to get a replacement unit, uh, motor and controller. Just to give you guys a heads up of what we do here, there's multiple batteries. We tested all these batteries, these work fine. The second thing we were gonna try was using drill batteries again. Unfortunately, that is not going to work because these provide uh, a much higher amp, amp hour rating than these smaller drill batteries. But even still, I'm kind of bummed. I feel like I let you guys down, unfortunately. I really wanted to get the wheel spinning on this to see if we could test the, uh, the chain rocket sizes to see if we could get decent acceleration out of it. This will have to wait the following week while I work out the motor and controller issues. Unless I upgraded the Harley motor, unfortunately that's a very, very large motor, adds a lot of weight, and I think it actually may overpower this system. That we have to redesign this entire plate. So. I thought it was gonna go well. It didn't go well, unfortunately, but again, these are the things we run into sometimes. What's up, guys? I'm really, really sorry about this week. I really wish I could have got it going for you guys. Unfortunately, something came up with the controller and motor, and it didn't work out that way, but I appreciate you guys watching anyways. It's gonna wait till the following week, because right now I am in Florida with Florida Man. There is a man in the parking lot. He is uh, drinking a beer, uh, barefoot, and he's also um, smoking a cigarette. These are the people I am with right now. So, uh, see you guys next week.